Andrew, welcome to Framptons here in, in Ringwood. Obviously, the club informed you recently that you wouldn't be um, offered a new, new contract. What's your emotions been like since you heard that news? Yeah, obviously gutted because, um, you know, to have such an amazing time at the club for those sort of five or six years, have so much success, um, you know, to leave a club like, like Bournemouth, who's given me so much, you know, it, it is sad. Um, I wouldn't say it was necessarily that unexpected just because of the way last season went, uh, not playing so much and, and obviously with the relegation as well, unfortunately players will leave the club. So, um, but yeah, no, obviously I was gutted, um, but you know, I'm, I'm in a positive frame of mind now, you know, obviously it's, it's done now, so I've got to move on and, and, and see what the next chapter is. I know it's still very early. Any immediate plans for the future? Uh, yeah, just, just basically keeping a, a look out to see what options I've got really, um, you know, see what clubs are doing. I think it's quite a, a different transfer window to any others. Um, I know a lot of people say that just because of the COVID situation financially, clubs just aren't sure where they are at the moment. So it's just waiting, the waiting game is quite a long window as well. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of things will happen towards the end of it. So yeah, I'm just, like I say, just enjoying time with the family and, and just seeing what comes up really. And still only 33, still plenty to offer. Yeah, I'd like to think so. Um, you know, I'd like to sort of think I could play for maybe for another three or four years. Um, if not more, I don't know. I'd have to see when I get to th sort of 38, 39. But I mean, look at Arthur Boric, you know, I think he was 40 when he left the club. So, and he had an amazing career. So, um, so yeah, I think I've got a lot, a lot to offer. But like I say, it's just, it's just whether a club wants someone like me and, and, and then we'll go from there. Just give us a word on Eddie Howe's um, involvement in your career while you've been at Bournemouth. I know when you were on loan here, you played alongside him and then you played under him. Yeah, I mean, I said when I joined, it was it was strange having played with him, like you say, and then and then him becoming the manager. And you got a slightly different relationship, you know. Um, I always obviously got on well with him when I played, and then you sort of more of a respect um, thing when he's the manager. So, but yeah, I, I mean, I've I've said it so many times. I, I can't thank him enough for everything he's done for me. And I was at Norwich at the time uh, when before I came here on loan, and and I just come back from a long term injury, um, and I was sort of wondering where my career was going because I couldn't get in the Norwich team, I couldn't get fit get a little niggles um, and he came to me and said look you know I want to bring you in and, and not just that I want to play you in, a, in your favourite position which is centre midfield which I've, I'd always played on the left or, or the right so you know I was really really pleased with that and and from that first day I walked to the door he's just developed me into a, a central midfield player um, and I feel like I've improved year on year and um, and I owe him I owe him so much and you know I'll always be indebted to what he's done for me in his club. And You've also worked a lot with Jason Tindall on the training ground. Just tell us about um, what he's like to work with on the training ground. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's, I've got a great relationship with him and, and so have all the players. He was obviously a, a massive part as well with what the gaffer did uh, while he was here. Um, and I, I think he'll be very hands-on. Um, you know, I think I saw Steve Cook came out the other day and said that he'd be his own, own manager. And I think he will, you know. He'll have his own ideas, his own plans. And I think he'll be very hands-on. He's got a great coaching team around him as well. So, you know, I think it's a really positive, positive move from the club. And I just hope that, you know, um, he does as well as he, you know, I think he can. Now, 15 years ago, you signed on loan from Southampton. I bet you never thought you would come back and help the club reach the Premier League one day. Yeah, just uh, it was fairy tale really, because, um, you know, when I, when I joined Norwich, it was a similar situation. I'd, I'd, I'd been at Wolves, I hadn't really played. And, um, joined Norwich, not really knowing too much about the club, knowing they just got promoted from League One, similar situation. I think the clubs then was looking to stay in the championship and we, we ended up getting promoted, um, coming to run us up in the championship. So it was a similar situation, but I, so I joined Bournemouth almost with that thought, anything can happen. Um, and yeah, obviously I joined and, and the rest is history really. It was just an incredible season and and it wasn't it wasn't by luck. We worked really hard. The manager worked really hard with all the players, um, and and we fully deserved to win the league. And it was just incredible. Let's just go back to when you you signed on loan ahead of the thirteen fourteen season on loan from Norwich. I know that Bournemouth fought really really hard to get you. Yeah, it was um, like I say. I'd come to the end probably end of my time. I knew I was probably going to be leaving Norwich. Uh, they'd obviously gone a little slightly different direction. I like I said, um, you know, I'd come back from a long term injury and. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I had numerous conversations with, with the gaffer and, and I just felt that he really wanted me. You know, I just felt that he really wanted me to come in and, and I could make a difference. And, and there's something to be said in that, you know, to be valued at a club is huge. You know, sometimes you can join a club where you're not really sure if 
whose decision it was and you know am I supposed to be here and I'm not really playing and I've had that in my career so to, to be wanted that much by the manager was was great and and throughout my time here I've been I felt so valued and 13-14 was intended to be a season of consolidation in the championship for the club but there was the end of the season there was that spurt and we finished ninth in the end almost made the playoffs yeah I remember that we um yeah we, we took a lot I think a lot of that the next season was was because of that season the, the finish to that because obviously you take the um, in momentum from that season into it and we started well uh, and yeah I think that's when probably the belief levels went up the second part of that season was when everyone thought you know what we could actually do something next year we, we, we probably could have made the playoffs and I think that was a, probably our goal almost well let's get in the top six um, and then obviously to win the league was just incredible and then of course as you said the following season um, 42 games for you three goals promotion to the Premier League everything a player could ask for yeah, uh, I just couldn't have, wouldn't have thought it could have gone any better, really. It was just, um, you know, like I say, I, it's difficult because the Premier League is the place to be, but the Championship, I just find it's so exciting, you know, and I think you probably speak to a lot of fans that would say that as well. You know, there's anyone can win the league, anyone can beat anyone. And it was such an exciting season and we had a lot of ups and downs. We went through a, a period which we always seemed to do in sort of February, March time where we never used to win and we still came back and won the league. And yeah, I mean... It was it was a fairy tale really for the club and but fully deserved. But for you, it wasn't the first time that you'd won promotion to the Premier League. Yeah, obviously when uh, when I was at Norwich, we did it, and like I said before, we you know we it was a very similar situation. You know, a lot of the players at Norwich and obviously when I joined Bournemouth, possibly hadn't played in the Premier League um, and and actually hadn't played in the Championship. So, you know, it was both teams had such hunger. To, to bet themselves, to bet, to get into the top league, to prove themselves, you know, prove everyone else wrong, and they had that underdog mentality. And I think there's a lot to be said about that in in the in the championship. And I think, um, I think, I think Bournemouth will go into that this season with that mentality because a lot of people will write them off again, um, the club and the players. And and I think, you know, the, the club have got to use that as a springboard to get back up to the Premier League. Any standout moments for you for that that season when Bournemouth won, won the championship? Um, yeah, obviously. The, the night we got promoted was an incredible night and, and more so probably the last game of the season just because obviously we won the league and, and the celebrations and everything. Um, yeah, there was, there was a lot of stand-up moments. Obviously for me personally, when we, I think, again, I've said before, when we, when we beat Sheffield Wednesday away, that was the first time I think we went top of the league um, and I managed to score in that game and that was a really special night because I think then it was like, right, we're on it. We, you know, we could actually win this. Um, so that was probably the highlight. But yeah, I think it's probably got to be the last two games of the season, which are... And, and obviously the bus ride and everything like that that was involved with it was incredible. Now the following season, the club's first in the Premier League, you were one of only three players in the country to play every minute of every Premier League game, along with Kasper Smeichel and, and Wes Morgan. That was a proud record as well. Yeah, it was, yeah. Because, you know, again, when we got promoted, you, you want to you carry on playing. You don't want to sort of, oh, well, we've got promoted now, now new players are coming in and, and you sort of take a back seat a little bit. I wanted to keep that momentum going and I, I had a massive point to prove that I could still do it in the Premier League. Um, and yeah, to play every every minute, I was very lucky with injuries as well. Um, and yeah, I just I just really enjoyed it. And, and like, like you say, to, to actually play every game and survive in the Premier League was um, it was a great achievement. What do you think it was that, that that squad had? Because at the start of the season, it was, you know, welcome to the Premier League, Bournemouth, you're going to have one season and that'll be it but it was just that proving the doubt is wrong just kept going yeah i remember we had a meeting actually with um with the team meeting i think the first day we were back the gaffer took a meeting and said look you know it sort of got a board out and, and we wrote down a few things advantages that we've got you know um and a lot of them are disadvantaged you know we'd never been in the premier league but we turned that around and said well we're the unknown no one knows we're the unknown package no one has played against us no one knows what we're going to do and people will underestimate us um, and that was a massive strength for us. Uh, and I think that was a massive strength for individuals as well, because like, like you say, everyone had a point to prove. Everyone wanted to say, well, I'm at, I know he's been playing in the Premier League, but I'm better than him. And when you've got that all over the pitch, you know, that alone will get you enough results to, to stay in the league. Um, and I think another, another thing we had as well was we just had partnerships all over the pitch. You know, we had quite a, a settled team, um, but we had partnerships wide, we had partnerships at the back, in midfield, up front. Um, and everyone seemed to just really play well off each other. 
Just got to ask you about that day at Old Trafford. After almost 400 games as a professional, you got your yeah. one and only red card. Um, <laughs> it was a very eventful day. Obviously, what was, go what was going on with Tyrone Mings and Zlatan Ibrahim? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to help you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to make you say it. So it, it was an eventful day. What was going on with Zlatan and Tyrone Mings? And just just give us your thoughts on that day. Yeah, um, that was. Uh, I think I don't know what it was to be honest. I think that was a massive game for us because we were on a, we were on a sort of back of a bad run. Um, again, went there. No one expected us to win. Uh, the gaffer wasn't well actually before the game. I remember that. And and I always joke with a few of the lads that. You know, I think I was too up for that game. That's why I got sent off. Um, but yeah, I, to be honest, I didn't think the first one was a booking anyway. I thought actually it was a good tackle, but he booked me. And then um, obviously I, I pushed. I, actually, if you look at the push, I hardly really touched him. He just played it very well. Uh, then he forgot he booked me and it was a whole drama of then remembering and sending me off. But, um, but actually, you know, when you look at it, you think someone got their head stamped on, someone got elbowed, and I was the one that got sent off, which was incredible. Um, but yeah, and, and actually, we always look back at that game and say that was actually a turning point in our season because I got sent off. I didn't know at the time. I was gutted. I was watching the game in the, in the changing room, um, just sort of thinking, please hold on. Uh, and we ended up holding on for a one-all draw. And that, then we went on a, a great run of wins because I think it was just, we got that aggression back. We got that fight in us to sort of dig in at Old Trafford against some world-class players and stay in the game with 10 men. And I think that was actually a springboard for us. Talk about a turning point. A, a turning point in the season before last was the goal against Brighton, which ended another bad run at the start of that season. Another season where Bournemouth had probably been written off before a ball had been kicked. Yeah, I think every every season Bournemouth would be written off. Um, so, yeah, and that was a, that was an especially bad start because we lost our first four. I think we probably underestimated the first two games. I think we had we had City and then oh, I can't remember who it was um, another top team third and fourth games and I think we just thought oh well we we'll are in the first two and then we've got two tough games and we lost the first two lost the next two so that game against Brighton was huge and, and like you know like you say to score was was great it was such a massive massive game for us and obviously JD popping up with a winner as well was um was even better I think that was that his first goal for I mean, his first goal for the club as well so yeah it was a brilliant night now for one reason and another it wasn't the end to the season the club would have wanted and it certainly wasn't the end to the season that, that you would have wanted either Yes, um, yeah, it's a real, real disappointment. This, this obviously, this first past season, I think, um, no, we, we, we got such a good start, and I think we were sort of seventh in November or something. Um, but it just slowly, slowly went down here. We just couldn't quite get that those points, that win to springboard us again, and we lost games that we should have, we should have won, and then suddenly, then you're playing one of the top four, which is very tough. The confidence is low, and I, I always say the problem with the Premier League, you run out of games so quickly in the Premier League because it's so hard to find a win, especially back-to-back -back wins. Um, and going in, obviously, the I think I think if we wouldn't have had the lockdown, I know it's easy to say now, and it's not an excuse, but I think we would have done. We were building behind the scenes, trying to get that momentum going. I think that killed us a little bit because obviously, then coming back and trying to fight our way out um, of that bottom three was really tough. But yeah, it's it's, a, it's an incredibly disappointing finish because everyone's worked so hard, everyone associated with the club. Um, has worked so hard to get the, the club into the Premier League, so to, to be back down in the Championship, it's it's really sad. But you know these things happen in football, and, and it just depends how quickly the club can bounce back now. I've asked you about your your plans for the future. How do you think Bournemouth are going to fare this coming season back into the Championship? Um, I think I think they've got a good chance. I think they've got a lot of quality. Obviously, it, you know you've got to keep hold of your best players. It's going to be very difficult for the club to do that because um, there'll be you know clubs coming in and. Um, the financial side of things as well. So, but I think I think the club have got enough. Um, got an exciting young young team, um, and like I say, got great coaching staff as well. So, no, I obviously wish them all the best. And you know, I I have spoken to people personally um, and thanked everyone. You know, it's it's been it's been an incredible journey for me. And I you know I've thanked everyone at the club, really, um, just to say thank you. Obviously, I've, I've, a massive thank you to the fans as well. Not just for me, but I think for the club, just because. I know it's well well documented, but obviously all those years ago, putting hands in their pockets, keeping the club going, um, and giving actually the club the springboard and the sort of basis to actually go and achieve the things that we did. So, a uh, massive thank you to the fans for their support, and and like I say, the hierarchy, of the club, the players, the staff, everyone associated with the club is you know I, I, a massive debt of gratitude. 
and I know that everybody at the club, after having given the club such sterling service down the years, everybody would want to reciprocate that. And thank you very much for everything you've done for the club. You've been a tremendous ambassador on and off the pitch. So thanks for everything you've done. Uh, thank you very much.